This is Tom Norello, and you are watching The Metal Voice. Hi, this is Neil Turbin. We're here at Bolt for Ronnie with the amazing Tom Morello, Rage Against the Machine, Audio Slave, and uh, I'm sure many other bands that I'm not mentioning. Uh, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, Eddie Trunk invites me every year. I was a huge fan of Dio. Uh, I love doing this band. I love to, I'm from the Midwest. I love to bowl. Uh, it's fun. It gets a little competitive sometimes. We're raising money for a great, great cause and supporting metal. And you're awesome, Tom. It's great to, to have a chance to speak with you before the whole bowling stuff starts kicking in. I know you got to warm up too. Yeah. So we'll be respective of your time. But I just wanted to ask you were mentioning about Chris Cornell and Audio Slave Tour. And you guys rehearsed next to Dio. Yeah, yeah. Which are, Audio Slave and Dio rehearsed next to each other for a while uh, in the 2000s. And I used to like press my ear to the door to try to hear mob rules or something. Uh, and but, but there was an interesting conversation between Ronnie James Dio and Chris Cornell where. Ronnie gave two bits of advice to Chris. One was never take shit from anybody, and the other was it doesn't matter how it doesn't matter the size of your pencil; it's how big you write your name. We got a lot of laughs out of that one. That's awesome. Thing. And uh, so, so what are you up to now? What? What? Uh, I know you're working on a record. Is that what you? Yeah, I'm working on like my first real like rock solo record. Uh, but one of the things that I love to promote is I. Uh, you know, there's that movie Venom, and the end title, uh, the, the riffs of the solo, the end title, were written by my 13-year-old son, Roman, who's a guitar prodigy, and he can shred circles around me, and we wrote the song together, and it's pretty awesome. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Look hard to hearing he's a big, he's a big, uh, he's a big riff writer, and it's... Any, is there a name for the album, or any song titles that you might own? Yeah, we have a one, the, the first thing was called Soldier in the Army of Love, the I with my son, Roman, as well. Yeah. Is that out yet, or... Yeah, that's out, that's everywhere. And One Last Dance is the song from Venom. Is there is there another song that you could tell us uh, that's that just on the album? You know, I was going to say that the two that are out now are uh, "Soldier in the Army of Love" and "One Last Dance," and they're both collaborations. You know, during pandemic time, while the rest of us were sort of sitting around being bored and frustrated, my kid was spending eight hours a day practicing, and so now I'm the rhythm guitar player in the family, and that's okay. Well, he's smart; it runs in the family up there, and, uh, making good use of the time. So you're a very outspoken uh, person, and some of your you know things that you spoke about and. You know, hearing you speak at the um, at the at the Metal Hall of Fame, I thought it was very succinct what you had to say. So I just wondered if there's any things that you know you'd address or that. Sure. I mean, there's only one. I I made 22 records, and there's only one message, and that is the world's not going to change itself. That's up to you. It doesn't do any good to go crying about it. You just you know, you just get to work to make a world that's more peaceful, more equal, with more justice, and with more heavy metal rock and roll. But thank you, Tom and. I just wondered if there's any equipment or any um, guitar companies or anything that you know you you find. Uh, I mean, because you're a pretty innovative guitar guitarist and and producer. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So I just wonder if there's anything. Well, guitar that, players always hate when I have to say about this because I don't think gear matters at all. I don't give a shit. It really, it literally matters zero percent. Like the guitars I have are all from like the Island of Misfit Toys. I use an amp that I bought one afternoon in 1988 just because that's the one they had, and I've played that on every Rage record, every Audio Slave record. It's like, I think that the, the, there's, there's musicians and there's artists. If there's artists, you'll take whatever you've got and find a way to make art. Musicians can practice a lot to sound really good, and that's also admirable, but, uh, but I'm not, I don't do any endorsements or anything like that, because I, I honestly think that it doesn't matter. Thank you so much, man, you're so awesome.